I think STAT started my freshman year, so I have always had it kind of as a resource to use, but it is really helpful, especially to be able to go in and retake a test um, so we don't have to come in before or after school because I play sports and I have a zero hour uh, jazz band class. So the before and after school is already taken up for me, so it's really nice to have that option. If you didn't have time to study or like you just didn't do well in the test, you can go in after school or during STAT and retake it. You have to do like work on the test, make sure you study, do all your work, get all that done. Sometimes you have to get like your parents' signature and like get all do all the problems that you got wrong on the test. Well, this year I've been taking harder classes and one of my most challenging classes pre calc, so during STAT I go in a lot to get help on just things I don't understand or retake tests and get caught up on homework because it's just like a extra time that I can get the help I need that I can't like ask questions in class or something I can ask them during stat. I am all for the retake policy however I'm going to college next year so it's gonna be a big change however I believe some students learn slower than, than others and I know some students do take this for granted at Whitefer High School. Oh, I have a retake, so I can just do better on that one. However, um, some kids need a retake in order to learn a concept. Um, I want to say twice as better, if that makes sense. Like, you learn it the first time, and like, okay. But if you take the time to learn it a second time, um, it's shown in, like, AP Psychology I took this year, that if you learn it more ways than once, you'll learn it better. So the question was, how has social studies changed at, this year from the past? I think one of the main reasons that that's, the change has been is we're moving away from, we're going to teach you 10 units about wars and, and other things, and the kids will walk away with simple content knowledge. We've moved away from that. We've moved away from textbooks, and we're moving towards more of a um, student-based exploratory type of history where we're looking at major themes and connections between events but it's done in a way in which we're, we're leaving textbooks out of the way so that we can access a greater wealth of information online. The amazing thing about White River is that kids are in touch with computers almost on a daily basis. And um, they uh, are getting, um, I guess, more literate with these devices so that when they graduate and they enter the workforce or secondary education, they are able right away to step in and feel comfortable in the situation they're in. Um, and I think um, Nate hit it right on the head where um, really them guiding themselves through technology and experiencing more source analysis and things with through um, these devices um, rather than just looking at a book and trying to pull out information is, is a key um, poignant part of what White River is doing right now. One of the unique things about the White River High School journey is that we had an opportunity three years ago to adopt a new curriculum. And the great thing about that process is that instead of looking at instructional materials, we took the time to take a step back, look at the common core standards, unpack those standards, and then we decided to look at curriculum materials and, and, and see if it matched the standards. And we realized very soon that there wasn't a printed curriculum that was a direct tie to the common core standards. So we ordered laptop carts for every single one of our social studies department and began the work of creating the curriculum. Part of that, of course, is the assessments. What we also did is we leaned on the release items from the SBAC and we realized that it was about skills and not necessarily the content. So if you look at those performance tasks that have been released by Smarter Balance, you'll see that a lot of those things are reflected in the assessments that we use in our classes. The great thing this year now, after two years of this, is that we're breaking down, we use a TACO form to break down the student assessment data and look at the skills gap that our kids have and we're going back and we're reteaching based on the skills that they don't have as opposed to some of the content that they may or may not know. In social studies now, one of the things that we do is we start with the Common Core, which sounds simple, but it's not. You know, and like Scott had said, to start with that standard first, that's how we're gonna guarantee that we're aligned with the ELA standards as opposed to using our instructional materials to guide the process, we start with the Common Core first. Therefore, we then, when we have an assessment, it's going to be specifically tied to the Common Core. Uh, one of the other big changes in social studies that we're really 
trying to implement with Fidelity is around this question. We're trying to get students to understand why do you believe what you believe? Because the Common Core is about skills. It's about being able to critically look at and skeptically look at sources, uh, which we think is just going to be really valuable for them in all sorts of avenues of life, not just social studies, but say you're considering a college. Well, what criteria are you looking at to determine what college you go to? So to be able to evaluate, to use that skill, to look at uh, information and different sources from different places, that's one of the things that we're really trying to focus on. A lot of times asking people to engage in this work without revealing the why is, is challenging because the, the, there's not that buy-in that you would normally get. Now that we know that we have these smarter balanced assessments coming, we know that our students will have to pass these to earn a high school diploma, and we know that their success or failure is directly linked to the work that we do in our social studies classes with them, they're committed. They realize that they're, they're like all teachers. They're in it for kids. They love serving kids, and so that's been the big, the big source of pride for me is they've engaged in this work, but they've done it for all the right reasons, and I'm excited as we transition to the new assessments. I think it's going to pay off.